Welcome to part three of chapter five. Um, here we're going to demo really quickly a perspective warp just because it's super cool and I just love this photo. It's really an amazing environmental shot. Um, it's got a look and feel. I mean, you could just see this being like a poster for a movie. It's just great photography. Um, you know, compared to the boy at the park, this is really, you know, knock your socks off uh, image to work with, which is always, always fun. Um, so a super cool thing, again, not that applicable uh, to daily work life, but uh, when you're in a pinch, it shows the power of the software. So we're going to go to edit, perspective warp, and trace a bit of an outline with these little pins in the corner around the uh, parameters of the train. These are sort of like wireframes in an animation, or you could consider it like um, horizontal lines. Uh, there's a thing in drawing where you go into perspective, there's a vanishing point that every photo you look for the horizon line, like when you look out into the distance. So we're going to bring this train down. For foreground and background. So let's get the wheels back on the, the actual uh, rails there first things first and then because it was sort of sky up in the air the other thing to note is um, things that are closer to you are always bigger so it's called the foreground and the background just like this wheel seems to be rolling off right here let's see what I can do get it in the groove there you can always throw a shadow on that too uh, foreground and background colors see this gray I mean this black and the screen. There's also uh, a terminology that will come up. Okay, if you're satisfied with that, then just hit return. Return is like, and then go back to your move tool. You can throw that back. Show something in more in perspective. Um, you could put a quick right click effect, just like we did on our. Um, plate with our shells, um, throw a shadow, doesn't seem to want to be showing visibly, okay, it's behind, that's why, no bueno, so we'll go around like that. I was thinking of it in terms of the perspective of throwing it a bit down, I want to hit that opacity. Sometimes a shadow will have a grounding effect. Even if you make it so spread, see that how it's getting gray? Even if it's so spread, you can't really even detect it as a directional shadow. It just sort of gives it a weight and a body. So instead of things just sort of floating, if you give them a shadow, turn that on and off. That it blends it into the background a little bit. Just gives it a little depth. I was really going for the idea of just a directional shadow coming off here when I went into that layer style, but in effect, with this sort of smoky fogginess of this dew, that kind of works. Um, so there you have it, there's the perspective warp. Now, I'm going to go into the egret. The, you'll have a separate um, exercise. Not going to go through all of them. There, there'd be no time. Um, and really, it'd be super redundant. My main point is to give you quick, um, quick tips, um, you know, tools of the trade, the industry standard stuff, and really get in there and... Um, learn how to use this stuff and not just sort of cookie cutter it because you could go through the book on your own. Um, 
uh, always reach out to me with questions. But I want, if I was standing on a, you know, there's a section about blur here with this egret. Not going to go through that. But if I was stranded on a desert island and I had to pick uh, tools, one filter for blur, I would pick Gaussian blur. So Gaussian blur, when I was just a straight up scanner operator, retoucher every day, sort of production quantity, we would scan in all types of things. Um, not on the flatbed scanner, like as in what you have at home, but um, newsprint, you get a moray pattern with the copy dot. Uh, when you do a transparency and the oil uh, produces a, a, a you get a pattern there as well. I'll show more of this in a PowerPoint, but, um, and with some audio describing it again, but just to show you a visual here while I'm in the program, you'd never want to go more than like two, but what it Gaussian blur does is take away a little bit of a defect. So if you scan something in, and it's not the highest quality, for example, it's a newspaper or it's a, any type of paper will end up giving sort of a pattern. It'll show some grain. Even if you have a very rough textured photo, it'll uh, scan in with a bit of a reflection and a sheen over it. So sometimes part of your trick is to Gaussian blur it while it's very big and then reduce, this wouldn't be an ideal image for it, but I'm just showing it because it has this very sharp top and then the very um, blurred bottom. So you can see where we go from this resolution. So what Photoshop does when it's blurring and sharpening is if you go in and look, it go, you go in and look, um, and I'll say edit step backwards, it takes these very sharp pixels and sort of melds them and merges it. Just as when you sharpen on sharp mask, what you're doing, what it's doing is taking a sample of all the color and doing the math throughout the whole image. Computers are very good at math. And it's taking samples of certain areas and it's sharpening them. And how you get a stronger edge and higher contrast, almost like a save for web image where you lower your pixel count for a ping. I'll show you that real quick. Wow. Export save for legacy web. Here you have 256 colors. You go down. Now, Photoshop goes in and decides, oh, well, you only have these colors to pick from. I'm only going to use those. So it down samples. In the same respect, to sharpen an image, it down samples and increases, sharpens the contrast between the touching pixels. So what happens there is you get an edge this becomes a stronger white where it was a nice continuous tone. Photos are considered continuous tone. Um, you get a nice sharp white where there was a smooth gray with lots of gradations. And that's how sharpening works. So Gaussian blur would work in the opposite. But it's a very good thing to note. And again, I've gone a little high on some of my numbers here just to sort of give you a, an example. But if you zoom out, go to 100, zooming in and out while you're sharpening and blurring is very important. Then you'll see, at it step backwards, the difference. That wasn't strong enough, actually. Because what you'll start to do Excuse me, there we go. Let's go a little stronger just for illustrative purposes. So sharpen, so filter, sharpen, unsharp mask. And Command F is always the last filter you did. So if you kept hitting that, something may not have gone right with that actually. Because I'm not seeing it and usually I can. Um, Command F is always just repeat. Okay, see it's starting to get a little strong.
because now these sticks, you can go into your hundreds. Now these sticks are jumping out and the pattern is becoming too pronounced and you're getting details in areas that you really don't want to focus on. So when you see it at 100, that's really what's happening. So edit, step backwards. There's the blurs, that's the normal or blur. And then you step forward with the unchart mask. It pops everything out, which if you do this judiciously, you can pull out your highlights and your shadows. You can pull out detail on the edges of a photo that's not particularly blurry or sharp, but something you just want to increase the contrast without changing the color. But keep in mind, Photoshop does take samples of the color and lessens them just like those color palettes that I showed you in the Safer web, where it goes from 256 to not as low as 16, but it goes, it averages in the, the mean number between like five by five pixel sample or something of colors that are abutting against each other. So that's, those are the two a Gaussian blur filter, blur, Gaussian blur is the most practicable, uh, practic practica <laughs> practical filter of all these blur that we've been shown tonight um, or today. And then sharpen on sharp mask is the other one I would bring on my deserted island of Photoshop uh, tools. And that, when you complete your exercise, concludes chapter five and all its glory.